Hi all. In this video, we're going to see about the actions of the thyroid hormones. Now, knowing the actions of thyroid hormone is important both from a clinical point of view as well as examination point of view. So, we'll see each one by one. So, what are the physiological actions of thyroid hormone? So, you can classify these actions into the effects on basal metabolism, effects on intermediary metabolism, effects on growth and development and systemic effects. So, we can classify the, the physiological actions of thyroid hormone into four. Effects of basal metabolism, intermediate metabolism, growth and development and systemic effects. So, now we will see each one by one. So, what do you mean by effect on basal metabolism? So, the thyroid hormone can act on the cells and thereby increase the cellular metabolism. That means it can increase the basal metabolic rate. And how does it do that? It increases the activity of the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Not only that, it will increase the number, that is it will increase the number of mitochondria, also increase the synthesis of mitochondrial cytochromes, so that there can be more generation of ATP and also there will be increased consumption of oxygen. So, the basal, uh, there will be increase in the basal rate of oxygen consumption. So, in a nutshell, it will increase the basal metabolism of the cells. So, there will be increase in cellular metabolism. Increase in number, size and activity of mitochondria. Increase the synthesis of mitochondrial cytochromes. Increase the activity of sodium potassium ATPase. And because of all this, there will be an increase in the temperature, increase in the heat production. That means it has a calorigenic or thermogenic action. So that is why the body temperature will be increased in case of hyperthyroidism. So, that, so the person will feel heat intolerance. Whereas in hypothyroidism, because the thermogenic action is less, the person will feel cold. That is why the patient will have cold intolerance. So, this is an important aspect of thyroid hormone. Okay, And it will increase the oxygen consumption by almost all tissues. So, these are the effects on basal metabolism. The next is intermediary metabolism. What do you mean by intermediary metabolism? It means the effects on carbohydrate metabolism, fat metabolism, protein metabolism and vitamin metabolism. So, what will happen to the carbohydrate metabolism? So, suppose this is the small intestine. So, what will uh, thyroid hormone do? See, we, we know that thyroid hormone is required for the growth and development. So, naturally, it would want to increase the amount of glucose in the blood. How does it do so? It will increase the glucose reabsorption from the small intestine so that there can be increased glucose in the blood. Secondly, it will promote gluconeogenesis. That means it will try to produce more glucose from other sources. So, there again the amount of glucose would increase. Also, it will stimulate glycogenolysis. Gly we know glycogen is a storage form of glucose. So, thyroid will stimulate glycogenolysis so that the amount of glucose will be more. Now, why are we increasing the amount of glucose in the blood? For growth and development, right? So, the thyroid hormone will also increase the uptake of glucose in the cells. That means it will increase the glucose uptake by the cells. So, this is how the thyroid hormone affects the carbohydrate metabolism. So, it uh, increases the reabsorption of carbohydrate from the GI tract, increases the gluconeogenesis, increases glucose uptake by the cells and increases glycogenolysis. So, next is fat metabolism. What, how does thyroid hormone affect the fat metabolism? See, we know that in the adipose tissue, we've got the triglycerides. So, uh, the thyroid hormone, as I said before, it will stimulate gluconeogenesis, right? So, one substrate for gluconeogenesis is fatty acids. So, what will thyroid hormone do? It will stimulate lipolysis so that there will be release of free fatty acids and glycerol. And this free fatty acids will uh, reach the blood and thereby the amount of free fatty acid in the blood will increase. Not only that, it will stimulate the utilization of this free, feet, uh, free fatty acids by stimulating the beta oxidation. So, what will happen to cholesterol? See, in general, thyroid hormone can stimulate the synthesis of cholesterol, but it also increases its hepatic reuptake by increasing the amount of LDL receptors on the liver. 
see the thyroid hormone will increase the synthesis of cholesterol but the synthesized cholesterol is taken up by the liver because the thyroid hormone will increase the expression of LDL receptors. Not only that, it will stimulate the excretion of cholesterol via the bile acids. So the net effect is that thyroid hormone decreases the cholesterol levels in the blood. So in fat metabolism, it stimulates lipolysis, increases the lipid metabolism uh, from the fat stores, increases free fatty acids in the blood, increase the oxidation of free fatty acids, stimulate the synthesis and oxidation of cholesterol, hepatic reuptake of cholesterol is increased because of increased LDL expression and the net effect is a decrease in the plasma cholesterol. That is why in hypothyroidism you can have increased cholesterol because there is no thyroid to decrease the cholesterol, right? So in hypothyroidism the patient can ha have an increased risk of atherosclerosis. Next what happens in protein metabolism? In protein metabolism, the thyroid hormone in lower levels, it is it has an anabolic effect, but at higher levels, it can cause an increase in proteolysis, thereby releasing amino acids. Okay, so that is why in hyperthyroidism, the person can have muscle wasting because of increased proteolysis. And finally, in intermediate metabolism, we've got vitamin metabolism. So the major vitamin that is met, uh, that is involved with thyroid hormone is vitamin A. So, this hepatic conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A is stimulated by thyroid hormones. So, suppose there is no thyroid hormone, what will happen? It will not be converted to vitamin A. So, what will happen? There will be increased amount of beta carotene. So, that again is a feature of hypothyroidism. So, thus we have seen all the four metabolism of intermediary metabolism. That is carbohydrate, protein, fat and vitamins. So next we will move on to the effect on growth and development. So we know that thyroid hormone is essential for the normal growth and skeletal maturation and it also promotes the expression for gene for growth hormone in the anterior pituitary. So how does thyroid hormone stimulate growth? It will stimulate the linear growth in bones. It will stimulate the endochondral ossification and also helps in the maturation of epiphyseal bone centers. That is how it increases in the normal uh, growth and development. So, it stimulates the linear growth of bone and endochondral ossification and maturation of epiphyseal bone centers, increases chondrocyte and osteoid activity and stimulates adult bone remodeling. Another action in the, of thyroid hormone on growth and development is that it helps in the removal of excess amine sugars like mucopolysaccharides so that it can prevent the accumulation of mucopolysaccharides in skin and subcutaneous tissue and thereby maintain a normal water balance. So that is why there is no edema usually. But you know in hypothyroidism patients you can see that there is edema formation especially in the face. Well, That is because this function does not take place. There is no one to remove the excess amine sugars. So there will be accumulation of mucopolysaccharides in the skin and subcutaneous tissue which will lead to edema in case of hypothyroidism. So this is another aspect of thyroid hormone on growth and development. So now we've finished the effects on growth uh, effects on growth and development. Let's move on to the systemic effects. So first on the cardiovascular effects, the thyroid hormone can improve the responsiveness of the heart to catecholamines like adrenaline, noradrenaline. And it can and how does it do so? It can increase the beta adrenergic receptor expression. It can increase the amount of beta receptors so that it is more sensitive to sympathetic stimulation. And it can also increase the proteins for excitation contraction coupling. So thereby this uh, due to the action of this permissive action of thyroid hormone on uh, catecholamines there can be increased heart rate, increased myocardial contractility and increased systolic blood pressure. So, because it increases the sensitivity to, to these uh, adrenergic receptors, there will be an increase in heart rate. Okay, and not only that, we know cardiac output is heart rate into stroke volume. So, because there is an increase in heart rate, and not only that, it increases the myocardial contractility, both of which will lead to increased cardiac output. And as I said, it increases the myocardial contractility, which means it increases the stroke volume. So on the whole, we have a hyperdynamic circulation even in, uh, because even whenever the thyroid hormone is increased. See, that is because there is an increase in cardiac output and there is shortened circulation time.
now another what is the effect of uh, thyroid hormone on blood pressure see thyroid hormone usually it increases the systolic blood pressure because obviously a cardiac output is increasing so systolic blood pressure also increases but what about diastolic blood pressure see the thyroid hormone will decrease the peripheral vascular resistance so the diastolic blood pressure would be decreased and thus we know that pulse pressure is, a, is as the difference between systolic as well as diastolic blood pressure so the pulse pressure would be increased so that is the effect of um, thyroid hormone on the pressure so we have seen that the thyroid hormone increases sensitivity to the beta beta adrenergic receptors and thus they have an increased heart rate increased stroke volume increased cardiac output increased systolic blood pressure decreased diastolic blood pressure and increased pulse pressure next we move on to the effect on nervous system so we know that whenever there is a thyroid deficiency especially in during pregnancy the baby would be born a cretin that means there will be mental retardation but why should there be mental retardation that is because of the effect of thyroid on the nervous system so in the nervous system the thyroid hormone will help in increasing the myelination of the neurons so that the conduction is faster not only does it increase the myelination it also increases the axonal and the dendritic growth and it also improves the dendritic branching branching so that there are more synapse formation and there are more neurotransmitters and on the whole the nerve conduction would be increased because of the effect of thyroid hormone so it protects myelination of neurons that means faster conduction it enhances the axonal and dendritic growth facilitates the dendritic branching for better connectivity and aids in the development of synapses now not only that it also increases the amount of neurotransmitters produced increases the number of receptors in the brain and thereby enhances the speed and amplitude of stretch reflex that is why in hypothyroidism we have sluggish reflexes especially the ankle jerk sluggish ankle jerk is a characteristic feature of hypothyroidism so in hypothyroidism because the synaptic um, connections are maintained by this thyroid hormone because of that the speed and amplitude would be decreased in uh, hypothyroidism and another effect is that it helps in the growth of cerebral cortex cerebellar cortex and basal ganglia and also enables a cell migration during brain development that is why when the uh, when the mother is hypothyroid the baby has mental retardation because for the proper growth and development of the cerebral cortex cerebellar cortex as well as basal ganglia we need thyroid another important effect on nervous system is that it helps it increases the general alertness and responsiveness improves memory learning and intellectual capa capacity and also essential for neurological health and development so this the so the effect of thyroid hormone on nervous system is is great and that is why whenever we have hypothyroidism in mothers the baby is born retarded or uh, the baby is born a cretin so what are the effects on the respiratory system so on the respiratory system it stimulates the rate of respiration which means the respiratory rate increases so because the respiratory rate increases there will be increased supply of oxygen to the tissues there will be increased utilization of oxygen by the tissues and thereby there will be more oxygen delivery to the tissues so on the whole it increases the oxygen delivered to the tissues by increasing the rate of respiration next moving on to the gastrointestinal symptoms so the thyroid hormone enhances the motility of the gi tract so that is why in hypothyroidism the patient would have constipation whereas in hyperthyroidism the patients usually complain of diarrhea it also increases appetite and food intake so that is why in hyperthyroidism the patient would have increased appetite but there would be weight loss whereas in hypothyroidism the patient would have decreased appetite but there will be weight gain so these are the reason the more it uh, the thyroid hormone it enhances the motility of gi tract and increases appetite of food intake so that is why we have these effects in hypo and hyperthyroidism and finally what is its effect on reproductive system see in women it helps in the follicular maturation and ovulation so during hypothyroidism we have menorrhagia or polymenorrhea see in hypothyroidism we have a lot of blood menorrhagia or polymenorrhea 
whereas in hyperthyroidism we have oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea these are the usual symptoms that are seen during hypo and hyper and what about in males it promotes spermatogenesis that is why in hypothyroidism the males may have impotence because of decreased spermatogenesis so these are the various systemic effects of thyroid hormone so thus we have seen about the effects on basal metabolism we talked about how it increases the sodium potassium atpase pump activity and all effects on intermediate metabolism in which we talked about carbohydrate protein fat and vitamin metabolism effect on growth and development and finally we saw the systemic effects especially the cardiovascular system and the central nervous system effects so i hope this video was useful for you thank you